the students who submitted more photographs all had a better portfolio than the one who only submitted their best photograph. So the best photographs came from the ones who tried the most. That's the lesson there. The more things you try, the more action you take, the better you'll be. It's the Inspiration Place podcast with artist Miriam Shulman. Welcome to the Inspiration Place podcast, an art world insider podcast for artists by an artist, where each week we go behind the scenes to uncover the perspiration and inspiration behind the art. And now, your host, Miriam Shulman. Well, hey there, it's Miriam Shulman here, your curator of inspiration, and you're listening to episode number... 316. So today's episode is a little bit different. You're going to hear me walking in the woods, hot day in July, and I need to go for a walk. And I was just really inspired to record the episode while I was walking. So you could pretend that you're with me out in the country I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to hear the birds in the background. You're going to hear me huffing and puffing. And I'm just talking to you as if I'm talking to a friend and telling you what you may need to hear today. So this episode was inspired by many of the calls that I've been having lately, both with new Artist Incubator members, prospective Artist Incubator members, And I'm also sharing with you successes from the Inner Circle members. So the Inner Circle, it's a little more of a gated program. It's part of the Artist Incubator, but it's the mastermind level of it. And those artists work with me inside a cohort. Right now, there are seven artists in there, and the new cohort will begin in October. A couple of the artists who are in this cohort now are committed to being part of the next one as well. You're going to hear from some of them today during the little commercial breaks I throw in. So you're going to want to listen to them because they're really inspiring as well. And every time I have an inner circle meeting, at the very end, I always ask the artist to share what their takeaways were. And so you're going to want to tune into this episode all the way to the very end because At the end of this episode, I share the takeaways that the Inner Circle members shared, and it was perfect for this episode. They're basically talking about how their success is based on committed to taking action, not committed to the idea of what they need to do, but committed to actually doing it. All right, so we're going to get into my walk in just a moment. But first, these words. All right, I've never done this before, but I had an artist incubator client come to me and he wanted to join the inner circle. And he wasn't sure if he'd had the money, but He also had told me he had a sales call booked with a potential collector. So you're going to meet him in a minute. I'm going to let you listen in on our coaching. But I said to him, Daniel, here's what you're going to do. I'm going to let you come to the inner circle tonight as my guest. You don't have to pay any money. And we're going to give you coaching on how to close your sales. He told me that his hope was to make $5,000. I said, I bet you can sell between five and $10,000. Come to the coaching call tonight. I'll coach you on it. And if you sell at least 5,000, you should just join the inner circle. No problem. Okay. So let's listen on our first coaching session together. Hello, my name is Daniel Trellenberg. I recently moved down to Austin. Another goal would be $75,000 in sales, but I'm going to aim higher and maybe $100,000 in sales for the year. And my goal for the next six months is at least $50,000. I promised that I would give you some advice on that. And what you're going to do is you're going to let them talk 
Do not interrupt. Keep your mouth shut, like lips closed. Okay, so guess what happened? Let's listen in to the inner circle. Of course, he joined the inner circle because this is what happened next. How much did you sell? Well, I ended up getting 9200 Wow. So almost to 10000 and that was a really good feeling because it was $10,000 closer to my goal. And so now I'm almost there. It was really cool to like experience that and just literally it was weird. It was like so weird because after the call, literally all the questions and stuff that I had written down, basically like that's how it played out when we went through our call here. I was just like, okay, well... I don't know what's going on, but it feels pretty awesome to know that like what Miriam's coaching us about is actually working. (laughs) What do you think was the biggest help for you just to share with the group? It was, um, it was like the first question that you had. And I think that really just kind of set the mood or the tone for the whole thing. And then just like being 80% of a listener and then 20% talking is like super important because we like to talk. I like to talk, but it's important when you're trying to sell to listen because that's where sales, you know, is from. It's from what they want to see in their house. So that's the power of coaching. You can do this alone, but I can promise you, you're going to go a lot faster with help. And if this is something that you want help with, coaching is going to pay for itself. So to check it out, head on over to shulmanart.com forward slash B-I-Z. You're going to find information there about the Artist Incubator, or you can simply go straight to apply for the Inner Circle. Our next cohort starts October 1st, 2024, and you don't want to miss it. Again, that's shulmanart.com forward slash B as in boy, I as in ice cream, Z as in zebra. Okay, and now back to the show. So I decided to record a podcast on my walk. Um, I'm sure the video, I mean, the audio quality is going to be bad. And if it is, I'll just record it again when I get home. And if you know, maybe we'll use this for the coming soon reel or, or something like that on Instagram. So what I wanted to talk about is being committed to the action. I got the idea for this podcast when I was talking to one of my new artist incubator clients. So even the ones who don't sign up for Inner Circle They have an option to also get a one-on-one with me, and this client signed up for a one-on-one with me. And we were talking about, like, all the different areas that she has. Her art is amazing. It's beautiful. I, I love it. She should have no problem selling it. And she expressed to me that she didn't want to... Um, focus on social media because she thinks social media is negative, which is fine. You do not have to focus on social media at all. If you followed any of my content, you know that I am a big believer in focusing on more traditional things, building your email list. Social media can play a part in all of this, but it does not have to. And I says, okay, so that's fine. Are you selling in person? And she said, yes. But what she meant by that was she was dropping pieces off at a show and she was going to pick them up the Sunday. And some of those shows can be amazing, by the way. I participated in those shows as well. However, it's very difficult to build a business if you're not opening yourself up to feedback. So I guess there's really two issues here. One is opening yourself up for feedback, and the second one is being committed to action. So this is the hardest part about any kind of creative endeavor, is that you do need to open yourself up for feedback. And that's the part that is scary, 
people don't want to, quote unquote, make a fool of themselves. Like I was talking to my daughter about applying for this job and she's like, well, I don't want to make a fool out of myself. It's like, well, who cares? I mean, that's the way I think, but this is my 55-year-old brain who is here. And I forget what it's like to be 26 and that is the worst thing in the world. So whether it's dating or looking for a job or putting your art out there and people saying no to it, or writing a book and people saying no to it, or publishing a book and saying, no, I don't like that. So this is something, if you're going to want to do anything worthwhile in the world, people are going to love it, and people are going to hate it, and people are going to be indifferent to it. But you have to be willing to open yourself up to all those things. And I think that's the reason why, actually. So, you know, I said there's two concepts here, the being willing to commit to an idea and being willing to commit to action and then being willing to open yourself up to feedback. So where this client was concerned, she said, well, I don't really want to sell in person. I'm tired of that. It's hard work for me. And I said, that's fine. You don't have to sell in person. You don't have to sell on social media, but you have to figure out some way to sell. So how are you going to do it? So the clients who come to me who don't want to be on social media and don't want to sell in person either, they're in galleries or they use publicity. So those are options, but you're still going to have to open yourself up for feedback and rejection. Because now you have to sell yourself to the gallery. And you have to be willing to hear no, because not every gallery is going to want you. That's just the way it is. So, in fact, you'll probably have to hear no many times before you get the yes. The clients who come to me who are the most successful, they're not just committed to the idea. So let me just explain what she had said to me. And... If you're listening, we're going to give this person a name. We're going to call her Jill. If you're listening, Jill, and you recognize yourself, and if you're not actually Jill and you recognize yourself, the only reason I'm talking about this on the podcast is because this applies to so many artists. Artists I talk to and artists I don't talk to. So I asked her, okay, well, do you have an email list? And she said, not yet. I said, well, are you starting to build one? She says, no, not yet. But she said, I'm committed to the idea. I said, that's great. That's great. But now you have to be committed to taking the action. And this is the difference between the people who are successful and people who are not successful. So now I actually am thinking about a different conversation I had with a new client. So she talked to me. She did end up enrolling, but this was the conversation she had with me before she enrolled. She was asking me, you know what? I don't think I have the right personality to do this. I don't have the right personality to be successful. I'm just not really sure. And I said, listen, you don't have to have a certain personality. I have plenty of introverts who are successful in my program. I have plenty of people who are ADHD. I even have people on the autistic spectrum who are part of my program. So there is no quote-unquote right personality that really needs to happen to do this. The people who are successful are the ones who do what I tell them to do. (laughs) They take action and they're willing to hear no. And the biggest difference is, are you merely interested in getting a result or are you committed? Are you committed to getting the result and you're willing to do whatever it takes? So part of that goes back to the belief triad. So if you heard me talk about the belief triad before, if you haven't, I'm just going to review it quickly. So the belief triad is you believe in yourself, you believe in your art, and you believe in your buyer. But when you combine those three things together, it's also believing, choosing to believe that this result is possible for you. That's what believing in yourself really looks like. You are believing in this result for you, for you. So if you believe in this result for you, you continue to take action. 
I like to give the example of J.K. Rowling because now whenever I read the story about her, the numbers always change. But when she went to publish Harry Potter for the first time, she heard no a bunch of times. You know, different reports, maybe it was 10, maybe it was 20. I didn't even heard stories that it was 40. But basically, we knew it was a lot. It wasn't Random House who published her. It wasn't HarperCollins who published her. It wasn't Penguin Books who published her. She heard no a lot. It was Scholastic, which at the time, nobody had known about. What the heck is Scholastic? She's the one who put Scholastic on the map because they said yes to her. Now, every time she heard no, she didn't say, oh, this is a terrible idea. I knew I shouldn't be a writer. No, they kept applying. They kept willing to hear no. Yes, the artist incubator teaches you strategy. You'll see results immediately because accountability, community, and coaching keeps you motivated. Previously, you learned how Daniel made $9,200, but beyond the results you can expect from making more art sales is the support you'll receive from your peers. Listen in to this mastermind session as artists share their takeaways. I mean, hearing other people believe in it, you know, that's the greatest takeaway. It's hard for me to personally believe in it, but having other people say, yeah, that's too cheap, or, you know, other people say that they that they see what I'm doing and it's valuable is very helpful. And I just listen, love listening to everyone's conversations, to be honest with you, like just listening, you learn something about the, not only the person, but about yourself and your own fears. To learn more about the artist incubator, go to shulmanart.com forward slash B-I-Z. That's B as in ball, I as in icicle and Z as in zebra. And now let's return to the inspiration place. Another example that I heard recently from one of my coaches was that if I were to tell you that there is a million dollars in one of these envelopes and there's 15 envelopes on the table, what do you do? Do you open four envelopes and after you've opened the fourth one and there's nothing in it, say, well, this opening envelopes thing doesn't work, must not work. If you believe that a million dollars is in one of those envelopes, you will continue to open envelopes. And not only that, every time you open an envelope and there's nothing in it, it's not going to slow you down your desire to open an envelope. You're going to keep opening envelopes faster because you're like, okay, well, it's not this one, it's not this one. It must be one of the ones that are left. And that is the same energy you need to have with working on your business, whatever your business is, whether you're an artist, whether you're building a life coaching business, whether you are a psychic medium, whether whatever you are doing, if you believe in it, you will keep trying to do things. You will keep working no matter what. Every time somebody says no to you, it should give you energy to keep going. Another way I heard this expressed is... I'm trying to remember who it was. I want to say it's Noah Kagan. He has a new book and it's called Rejection Goals. So obviously you want to get to a yes, of course. But instead of making the goal the yes, you make the goal you want to hear 100 no's because you know you need to hear that many no's before you get a yes. So every time you hear no, okay, well, I'm, I'm working on my rejection goals. That's going to get you the result. One more way I heard this put, this is a story, and I don't know the specifics, but it was a photography professor, and he told his class, okay, here is how you can submit your photographs. You can either take as many pictures as you want, and you submit as many as possible, or you can submit just one, and you submit your best possible one. Okay. I'm not sure if it, it, the story is that he gave them a choice or they must have split the class in two to force like half of them would get to do it this way and the other half would do it that way. It was probably a psychology experiment. I don't really know. Anyway, this is a story. <laughs> but I think it's a true story. So I want to believe it's a true story. So the way it went is that the students who submitted more photographs 
all had a better portfolio than the one who only submitted their best photograph. So the best photographs came from the ones who tried the most. That's the lesson there. The more things you try, the more action you take, the better you'll be. Now, let's circle back to my original thought for what this podcast would be about, which is the idea of being committed to the action. So this particular artist, she said, yes, I'm committed to the idea of building my email list. It makes sense. I was like, well, have you started yet? And she said, no. I said, okay, you have to be committed to to, to the action, the action of doing it. And she's like, well, then I do it and then I'm done? I'm like... Well, no, because you always need to be building your list. So you can get your initial amount of people and start emailing right away. But you need to be committed, always building your list. These are your prospects. These are your potential customers. This is how you're going to make sales. That's it. And it's not just building the list. It's also using it. So that's the thing that I, I hear so much. Uh, and then I talk about this inside my free masterclass, How to Sell More Art. We'll link that in the show notes, but it's shulmanart.com forward slash sell more art. I'm going to turn around here. You're out with me in the country today. Okay, so what I talk about is, oh shoot, I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, 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 okay. This is um, three ways to know. So usually people either, they don't have an email list or they have an email list, but they're not using it. And also some people, they have an email list, but it's just, it's, there's not many people on it because they are not committed to asking people to join their email list. And I promise you, the best way to add art collectors to your email list is ask them to join. None of this crazy five ways to decorate your house. They don't want that from you. It's just get on my list and I will send you exclusive peaks of the art or you'll get first dibs on this art. That is how you build the list of people who want to buy from you. People who want the five ways to decorate your house. First of all, we're not really decorators anyway, so they, we're not putting out decorating content. They're not really going to want to learn from us how to decorate our house or how to hang an artwork. That's not their problem. Their problem is they have a home and they want it to look amazing and they want it to be their personality. And why is that important to them? Because expressing themselves is important to them. That's it. That's it. Now, there's many different nuances on that, like how they're expressing themselves, and you're going to show them how your art helps them feel a certain way. None of this, I love to do commissions. I just love painting commissions. No, your customer does not care about that. Your customer cares how that would make them feel. How that would make them feel. They want you to help them. And they want you to help them feel a certain way. That's what art does. Art matters. It's not about decorating the house. It's about helping them feel a certain way. If your art does that and you show them how your art does that, you will have no problem selling. But you do have to be committed to taking the action. Hey there. So at the end of every inner circle mastermind session, that's my select group. It's by application only. And right now there are seven artists in there and the next cohort opens October 1st. But the reason that I wanted to jump here and share their takeaways, because at the end of every session I asked their takeaways is because it was perfect for this episode. So I want you to listen in to Alyssa Peake, Chris Holt, and Kelly Phipps, three very talented artists, and hear what their takeaways were at the end of one of our Inner Circle Mastermind sessions. 
My biggest takeaway is that no matter what our problems are, they're all solvable. And we just need to take action. Take inspired action. Just the, just take actions. Do, do things. You know, uh, Don't worry about trying to boil the ocean. Just, just one thing at a time. I think having that mindset around the email and getting it out, regardless of what I have, that it's okay to do it. And I think that was my big mental block. Wasn't that amazing? Exactly what we're talking about today. All right, let's wrap up the show. All right, my friend, my thumb is getting tired from holding down the uh, video thing because I don't know how to do it hands-free mode because I am a Generation X girl who is not so good with technology, only a little bit good with technology. So I'm going to end here. And when I get back to the studio, I'll see if this is good enough and maybe I'll add more to it. If not... I'll see you the same time, same place next week. Until then, stay inspired. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Inspiration Place podcast. Connect with us on Facebook at facebook.com slash shulmanart, on Instagram at shulmanart, and of course on shulmanart.com. 